NASA conducts a lot of tests in various places and so it interestingly also conducted a test in the Atacama Desert. Now, do you know of this Atacama Desert? Why is NASA so interested in this particular desert? Well, it is the oldest and the driest desert on planet Earth. But where exactly is this desert located? This desert is located in South America. So, before we know more about this oldest and driest desert, let us first take a look at the major physical features of the continent of South America. The physical features of the continent can be divided under four broad headings. And these are the Andes mountain range running from the north to the south of the continent. Then we have the central plains. Then we have the eastern highlands on the eastern side of the continent. And finally, we have the narrow coastal plains lining on the western and eastern coast of the continent. So these are the four major physical divisions of the continent. In today's lesson, we will be learning about the first and the most prominent physical division that is the Andes. The extreme geographic variations of the continent adds or contributes to the diversity of the landscape and the vegetation of the continent. So in this lesson, we will be first focusing on the most prominent physical feature of the continent and that is the Andes. The Andes mountain range and the Amazon river system, as you can see here in this map, are the two most important and dominant physical features of the continent. The Andes mountains run along the western coast of the continent of South America and they are world's longest mountain range stretching over 7000 meters. So they run for a length of 7000 meters along the western coast of the continent and is the longest mountain range of the world. Now let us look at the exact extent of the Andes mountains. So the Andes mountain extends from the very north to the very south of the continent crossing over six countries and these six countries include Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Chile and Argentina. So crossing over these six countries, the Andes mountain range stretches over 7000 meters covering almost the entire western coastal region of the continent. Now what do you think? The Andes in South America were there since the very beginning? No, they are a range of young fold mountains just like the Himalayas of India. So they were eventually formed over a long period of time due to the earth's tectonic plates that exist over the region. So the Andes, as we all know, lies on the western coast of the continent. And this range of young fold mountains came into existence due to the movement of certain important tectonic plates that are present here. So as we have already studied in previous lessons that the Earth's major tectonic plates are six in number. So what are the major tectonic plates on Earth? Well, we have the North American plate, South American plate, the Pacific plate, the Eurasian plate, African plate, Antarctic plate, and finally, the Indo-Australian plate. So these are the six major tectonic plates on Earth. But besides that, there are other minor tectonic plates in between these major tectonic plates that are also in continuous motion. So now, the minor tectonic plates are many in number. Let's see what are these. We have Jean de Fuca plate right here near the North American plate. Then we have the Caribbean plate and the Caucasus plate. In the southern hemisphere, we have 
Nazca plate to the left side of the South American plate. Here we have the Indian plate, the Arabian plate, the Scotia plate and finally the Philippine Sea plate. So besides all those major tectonic plates, these are the important minor tectonic plates and all of these are in continuous motion as they lie above the liquid magma, the hot liquid magma that is present in the earth's interior, right? So many, many years ago when the Nazca plate and the South American plate were in continuous motion, they collided against each other, right? So the South American plate and the Nazca plate, they collided against each other and eventually the land in between got crumbled up or lifted up to form the Young Fold mountain range that is the Andes. So it is because of the Nazca plate and the South American plate that the collision of these two led to the formation of the Andes mountain range in the western side of the continent. So that is how exactly the Andes mountain range came into existence. Wasn't that very interesting? Well, in the same Andes mountain range, we have another very interesting feature. We have the roof of the Americas. Now, what exactly is the roof of the Americas? Have you heard about it? Well, the roof of the Americas refers to the highest peak in the Andes mountain range. Now, we all know that the Andes mountain range is the longest mountain range in the world. Now, in the longest mountain range, we have the highest peak known as the Mount Aconcagua. So, Mount Aconcagua is the highest peak in the Andes mountain range and is often or more popularly known as the Roof of the Americas. So, where exactly is it present? So, on the map we can see that Mount Aconcagua or the highest peak is present in the boundary of two important countries of South America that is Chile and Argentina. So, Mount Aconcagua is found on the boundary line between Argentina and Chile and this stands at an elevation of 6,000 960 meters. So that was the elevation of the highest peak of the Andes mountain range. Now, besides the roof of the Americas or Mount Aconcagua, two other important peaks that are present in the Andes mountain range are the Chimporazo and the Cotopaxi. Now, while Chimporazo is the second highest peak at an elevation of 6310 meters, the Cotopaxi is also not far behind but stands at a height of 5897 meters. So these two are the images of two other important peaks in the Andes mountain range. Now let me take you around a very interesting fact about the Andes mountain peaks. Now though the mountain range falls in the equatorial region, it has high snow clad peaks. Why so? Well, the upper portion of the peaks is very cold and this is majorly because of the normal lapse rate. So as you go higher and higher, the temperature decreases, right? The temperature falls with the higher altitude. So because the mountain range is so high and the peaks are at such high elevation, so even though the Andes mountain range falls in the equatorial region, that is a hot region, it has snow-cat peaks because of the high elevation of the peaks in the Andes mountain range. Interestingly, though the high peaks are covered with snow almost throughout the year, the land below is very hot, right? It is very hot and it experiences frequent earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. So, the mountain ranges at lower elevation in the Andes mountain range experiences frequent earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Now, what exactly could be the reason behind this particular event? Well, this is because the Andes mountain range falls in the ring of fire region. Now the ring of fire region is what is present around the 
Pacific Ocean and is prone to active volcanic eruptions and earthquakes as this region covers the boundaries of major tectonic plates of earth that are in continuous motion. Now, besides being in the ring of fire region and being prone to frequent earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, the region has also a number of important plateaus and other massifs. So, in the Andes mountain range, a very important highland plateau is the Bolivian plateau. So, the Bolivian plateau, also known as Altiplano, is a highland plateau of the Andes mountain range and is found somewhere right at the center. So, the Bolivian plateau is a highland plateau found in the Andes mountain range. Now, another important characteristic of this particular plateau is that it is an intermontane plateau. Now, what exactly is an intermountain plateau? So, intermountain plateau means a plateau that is surrounded by mountains on all sides. So, Bolivian plateau that falls in the Andes mountain range region also is an intermountain plateau. That is, it is surrounded by mountains on all sides. So, here is an image of the Bolivian plateau. It is one of the most important highland plateaus of the region and also has a unique landscape. Now, before we proceed with our lesson, could you help me answer this simple question? Which intermountain plateau is found in the Andes Mountains? Is it the Deccan Plateau or the Tibetan Plateau or the Bolivian Plateau or is it the Mexican Plateau? I think you have already guessed the right answer. The right answer is the Bolivian Plateau. So, the Bolivian Plateau is the intermountain plateau that we find in the Andes Mountains. Now, say hello to the hand of the desert. Have you heard or seen this beautiful wonder? Well, the hand of the desert is what you can find in the oldest and the driest desert of the world. Which desert are we talking about? Well, we are talking about the Atacama Desert. So, the hand of the desert is what we can find in the Atacama Desert. Atacama Desert, again, is an important desert that we find in the Andes mountain range. So, this is one of the prime tourist attractions of the region and of the country of South America as a whole. So, the Atacama Desert is the oldest and the driest desert on earth and it has been so since a very long time because semi-arid conditions has prevailed over the region for many many years. That is why this region is now the driest desert on earth and this is where we can find this beautiful hand of the desert. So, if you ever visit the Atacama Desert, then you must not miss the chance to click a picture with this beautiful hand. Now, as I mentioned that the Atacama Desert is the driest desert and has experienced semi-arid conditions for many, many years. But what exactly is the reason for the same? Well, the Atacama Desert is located in the rain shadow region of the Andes mountain range. Now, what exactly do we mean by a rain shadow region? Well, the Andes mountain range acts as a barrier against the moisture laden winds that come from the eastern side or the eastern water bodies of the continent. So, here we are referring to the Atlantic Ocean. So, the moisture laden winds that come from the Atlantic Ocean towards the western coast are obstructed by the Andes mountain range and so, this being on the other side of the Andes mountain range does not receive enough rainfall thus making the region very very dry. But now, you must be confused with the fact that Atacama Desert lies in the coastal region and it also has another major water body on its side. Then why does it not receive moisture laden winds from this side of the continent? Well, the reason is on the Pacific Ocean side, we have 
cold water currents that are present here. Now these cold water currents obstructs the evaporation rate over this region and thus also obstruct the formation of clouds. Now since there are no proper formation of clouds, there are no moisture laden winds or clouds that can bring rainfall to this region. So the Atacama Desert that is tucked in the shadow of the snow cap mountains are a very dry region and has semi arid conditions and receive no rainfall or almost nil rainfall because of this presence of this huge mountain range. Now though the Atacama desert is the oldest and the driest desert on earth, it does have an economical significance. Why? Because the Atacama Desert is a region with a huge or the largest deposit of nitrates, right? So nitrates again is an important mineral resource that is used in many industries. So the Atacama Desert, that is the largest nitrate deposit in the world, makes it very economically significant region. Now besides the nitrate deposits, other important things found here are large reserves of copper. Now copper that is used on a daily basis by us that is in almost all electrical appliances and electrical gadgets we have the use of copper. So copper that is used extensively in electrical wiring is found in huge quantities in the Atacama desert region. So it makes the region definitely a commercial one and economically very valuable. Now after the Atacama Desert around the center, we have another important desert in the southern portion of the continent. Here we are talking about the Patagonia Desert. So the Patagonia Desert in the southern portion of the continent is found in the Patagonian Plateau region. So in the southern portion, we have a huge plateau that is the Patagonian Plateau. And in this Patagonian Plateau, we have a very important desert that is the Patagonian Desert. So the Patagonian Desert is often regarded as the Patagonian Plateau region. Now the Patagonia region is very very famous because of its unique landscape and huge natural reserves. It is also a place with different unique valleys and forests and also has large glaciers. Now this region is believed to cover many provinces and each are famous because of its unique attractions. This region has wide deep valleys and is surrounded by high rugged cliffs and has no permanent streams. So the Patagonia desert region is definitely unique, not only because of its unique landscape, but also because all the provinces that it covers and each province has a unique attraction of its own. Therefore, the region is definitely to be admired and is one of the most favorite tourist destinations in South America. Now, just like Atacama Desert is so dry because it is found in the rain shadow region of the Andes mountain range, even the Patagonia Desert is a cold desert and is formed because of the rain shadow conditions that are created by the Andes mountains, right? So the Patagonia Desert is a cold desert and is again a result of the Andes mountain range acting as a barrier and blocking the rainfall that does not let the region experience enough rainfall making it fall in the rain shadow region. Now interesting fact about this cold desert is that winds here or the wind currents here blow at such a high speed that if you are standing or walking in this particular region with your friend then you won't be really able to listen to what your friend is saying or he won't be listened to what you are saying. This is how strong the winds are in the Patagonia desert region. Now though the region has such arid conditions and are not really suitable for human habitation, it definitely is a ground of huge mineral reserve. So the important minerals that are found in this region are coal, oil and gas. 
Now all these important minerals are what can be extracted using high modern technologies and thus this region just like the Atacama Desert is also commercially and economically very valuable. So in this lesson we were able to understand how the Andes mountain range is one of the most dominant physical features of the continent and lies on the western coast. We saw how the region covers around six countries. We saw how the mountain range touches almost all the countries of the continent and is one of the longest mountain range of the world. Now besides being famous because of its long extent, the Andes mountain range also has some other important massifs and plateaus and the presence of hot and cold deserts like the Atacama Desert and the Patagonian Desert respectively. In our next lesson, we'll be taking a look at other important physical features of the continent of South America. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5,000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.